From New York City's only all-news channel, this is The Road to City Hall, Election Day, 1993. Good evening, I'm Louis Audley, along with Roma Torrey. Welcome to New York One's special expanded election night coverage on the road to City Hall. We have deployed reporters at all major campaign headquarters, at candidate field offices, and the Board of Elections. Throughout the night, we'll take you across the city to bring you the fastest returns and the most comprehensive analysis of the vote. New York City has a new police commissioner. I'm Roma Torrey with the latest in a New York One Minute. An 80-year-old woman is found stabbed to death in her queen's home and her husband is being charged with the murder. There's a significant lack of opinion among New Yorkers when it comes to the North American Free Trade Agreement. The ASPCA is asking the city council to increase protections for New York's carriage horses. It's here, the first case of the Beijing flu this year. Doctors are recommending flu shots for the elderly and residents who are confined to nursing homes. And tis the season to be stuck in traffic. Holiday events put the city on gridlock alert. They call themselves stepsisters, and no, this isn't the military, and they're certainly not a music group. They're prisoners, doing time for such unsisterly things as drug dealing, prostitution, and parole violation. And while many of them have spent almost as much time here in Rikers Island as they have in their own homes, they swear this is their last trip to jail, and they owe it all to a unique program called STEP. And as for the success rate of the STEP program, the numbers themselves speak loud and clear. Of the 279 who graduated since October, just 3% have returned to jail. That compares to 60% in the general prison population. Originality on Broadway these days is almost as elusive as commercial success. We saw 13 revivals open this year. In fact, most of the new shows still running are derived from old sources. As for the new crop of shows coming in, Obviously, the trend is continuing. Nice to say hello. Terrific kids. Hi. Hi. How am I doing? Thank you. He's back. After four years on the outside, Ed Koch is no longer persona non grata at City Hall. He was honored at the inaugural Sunday, and he's such an influence that some observers have warned that Rudolph Giuliani is in danger of creating Koch 4 instead of Giuliani 1 as he fills out the ranks of the new administration. For New York 1, Roma Tori. I admire Brian Coyle. Imagine one of the most foul, crude, rude, obnoxious people that you'd ever want to meet, and yet a miracle worker. This is a high school principal who is so foul, he teaches children how to burp, and yet he has won them over so incredibly that uh, these children have turned from dropouts to becoming A students. New York 1, because there's only one New York. Dinkins is ahead for the first time tonight by approximately 2,000 votes. He has uh, taken the lead from Rudy Giuliani. What a horse race this is. They don't script them any better than this. We should point out 200 votes now separate the, the two candidates. I got a feeling it's going to go up and down a lot before the night, so yeah, one if you, way or the other. If you ever thought that your vote didn't count, <laughs> yeah, think again. The Red Shoes has a number of missteps, among them opening the show with a scene from Swan Lake featuring the great music of Tchaikovsky. Compared to that, the musical's original tunes fall far short. Also, the play ends with a ballet version of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Red Shoes. That classic story only points up the glaring flaws in the musical's own dull book. So there he is, empty stage, table, trademark plaid shirt, just talking about whatever. But Gray has this uncanny ability to take the ordinary situations in life and make them extraordinarily amusing. Spalding Gray may remind you of a Gentile Woody Allen, a bit of a hypochondriac, self-absorbed, and terribly funny. His work may appear slight, but it is the purest form of theater alive. A stage, an actor talking, and a good story. I'll take that over a falling chandelier any day. I'm Roma Torre, and that's a wrap for New York One. You know what Jesse Jackson said? More black children were uh, shot in New York City than all of the people who were lynched uh, uh, since the Civil War. You know that. Can we move on just to another area, economy? Let's go back to the economy. You talked about uh, Giuliani having to cut service in order to balance yeah. his $2 billion budget cap. He also says he is proposing no massive layoffs and no tax increase. And so it's unfortunate that uh, there are those who would turn this uh, hurt into hate rather than hurt into hope. 
Why do you say that, though? I, because I, I, I point out that a lot of people would say your involvement uh, charges this racially. Well, that, that, that is not true. As, as a matter of fact, it is at a moment of tragedy like this that we have the moral obligation, the burden to stand up and to speak up. And while there is the, the rawness of this, while there is the open wound, let's provide some salves and some prayer and some hope. And if All you right. will, in this tough city, some gentleness. All right, that's a nice way to close. Uh, you do owe us some time, Reverend Jesse Jackson. We uh, we extend the invitation for you to come back and continue this discussion. Okay. Thank Thanks you. for coming. That is it for tonight. Uh, thanking our guest one more time, Jesse Jackson, and be sure to join us Tuesday for another Road to City Hall. Our subject: a proposal to merge the emergency medical service with the fire department. Until then, for all of us here at New York One News, I'm Roma Torre. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Road to City Hall.